Sportagious. Sport gets smarter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sportagious Videocast, where we bring you insights into the sporting world, straight from athletes, sports business, professionals, and more. Our guest today is the president of uh, the P Portugal National Squash Federation. He's a man of many talents, also a squash coach. Uh, one, of, one of the rare people that I've come across from the squash world who, you know, is obviously leading one of these federations and is also very, very active on social media, is sharing his thoughts and perspectives on squash. And it's really, really great to have him on the show today. Luis Ferreira, welcome to the show, mate. How are you? Welcome, and uh, thanks a lot for having me, Zushan. It's, uh, as I said uh, in our previous uh, conversation, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to have, um, well, to be here and represent Portugal uh, here at Sportages. And I want to congratulate uh, you and your team already for the putting up the Squash Summit, which is a success already before uh, starting this this uh, next uh, end of the week. So thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The honor is mine. It's uh, wonderful to have you here, Luis. And just to start off, you know, we we talk about Portugal. You know, the first thing that I think globally that comes to mind is, is Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Everything else is secondary to that. Um, yet here we have this wonderful game of squash, which is, from what I understand, much like it is over here in Australia, not even close in terms of the overarching knowledge, understanding, uh, audience, followership that a sport like football or soccer, as we call it here, has in Portugal. So tell me a little bit about the game over there, uh, especially, you know, with the growth of other sports. So if I'm not mistaken, paddle is growing rapidly there. Um, you know, we I once spoke to... Um, Andre from Air Courts, who is also from Portugal, I believe. And, you know, he was telling me all about how this boom of paddle has just erupted, you know. So where does squash sort of sit? What is going on on that side of the world? Uh, and, you know, how does the game continue to run from your perspective? And where is it sort of headed? Okay, that. That is actually a very good question and mentioned to Cristiano Ronaldo because he's from a small island called the Madeira Island, where I am from. So I'm also from Madeira Island. So right. <laughs> I, I really can believe that if he did it, well, I can do it as well as long as my, my team uh, to project uh, squash. But yeah. um, squash in Portugal, um, well, the book says and uh, people say that it started because uh, of British families. Well, we have, we're in Portugal, as we know, we, we have a lot of traditions from uh, people coming from the, the north of Europe, especially from, from England. And in Madeira, uh, lots of uh, English families uh, went to live there and buy, uh, they bought lands. And even, even today, they, they are very um, inside of the island and they call themselves Portuguese. But um, um, they, they brought squash maybe in 1910. And so um, w when I got into squash, the, the first time I, I saw it, I was like 15, 16, and I said to myself, what a strange sport. People running uh, after a ball, chasing it and throwing it against the wall. I said, this is, well, I, well, I said to myself, and I have to be honest, this is stupid. <laughs> till till uh, I went in, in, into the, that, that sport and I tried it. And it was unbelievable. It's like a friend of mine uh, from Brazil, Renato Galego, says the, the, the problem is not um, um, uh, promoting squash. The, pro the, the challenge is to bring people inside the court because once we get them inside, the retention, the, the, according to the study he, he, he did, it, it's about 90%. And, and uh, as, well, as a coach as well as I am, I, I feel that. If I bring 10 people in, eight will, will, will stay. So, I feel that, that that is really the real challenge that we have in squash. And in Portugal, what we need, to, we are trying to do now is create awareness. And you mentioned social media. That's that's why why I am there so much. I, I, I like it as well. But <laughs> we need to get exposure to, to squash uh, uh, to make it uh, there and to promote it like other sports does. And you you were saying about paddle. Yes, here in Portugal, it's it's growing. It's like for me. Uh, it's the, the, 
the highest uh, growing sport in, in Porsche right now. Uh, I, I saw them uh, arriving and they, they got the public recognition sports before we did. And then they got the, 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 the sporting utility um, uh, as we grew up this year, uh, uh, this month, this past month. Uh, and I saw that and I said, why and how, how did they do it? And I really appreciate the work that, that uh, they were doing. And one of the good things that uh, this pandemic brought was that we, we got to speak together. Uh, um, I remember last year we said, well, racket sports, we need to, to unite, we need to, to speak and how can we uh, gather and put our sport together. So we had this lunch with president of tennis federation, paddle federation, table tennis and squash. And I said, this is good. This is how we, we got to, to grow. When people said to me, uh, you must not, uh, sorry about uh, speaking about paddle. I said, sorry, why? They're doing an amazing job. What, what can squash do as they did? Yeah. So they, they are really strong at social. They, they are a fun sport and everybody plays it. Why, why cannot we do it? Why cannot we do the same? So we need to, we need to look at best practices and, and go after them. And, and I feel that we, we are doing a, a similar path. Yeah, look, absolutely. And I know on that note that there is uh, an announcement that's been made very recently by, by your federation uh, about a couple of things that you've, you've accomplished. Uh, and I saw it all across social media, but you know, you being here with me, I think your best place to sort of share that and talk a little bit about what's uh, been going on. Yes. Um, well, when, when we started um, this, this, this uh, route, uh, me and a couple of um, friends and people that we know that were really had the passion to, to push forward, uh, squash forward. We, we said, okay, we're going there, but we, if we're going to, to do this assignment, if we want to, to run squash in, in Portugal, we, we need to have a plan. What, what we need to, to do. And this was clearly one of the things that we needed. Uh, not only organize squash in Portugal, what, what had to be done, but we, we said to ourselves, we need to, to be at the same level as other sports, and we are not. So we had to organize our accountancy, we had to organize our circuits, we didn't have any clubs, uh, we didn't have a, a junior program, um, we didn't have the, the women the squash um, side look into it, and we didn't have the, the public recognition. So we said, we said well, okay, we, we have to go that, that way. And it was good that we had at the, at the board, we had two lawyers, so that, that, that was good as well. <laughs> and uh, also a, a person who is related to uh, federations of other sports before. So it took us almost four years, four years to, to do lobbying, to organize our federation, and finally to get the, the, the public recognition. But that was the first stage. The, the second stage that we got this, this, uh, this year was um, that gives access now to public funding. And the best ex example, I, 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 when people ask me, okay, congratulations, you, you did it. And I, we say, no, we, we are going to start now. Because uh, I remember the first time I went, to, we, we were going to do this uh, European Championship, European um, 15 and 17, and we got to the municipality and we said, listen, can you help us? We are going to do this uh, massive uh, championship with almost 30 uh, countries in Portugal. Uh, for squash, we're going to represent Portugal, we, we're going to promote it. And they simply uh, uh, asked, do you have public recognition? Uh, if so, you fill up this paper. If not, well, you fill up this paper. And I said, what's the difference? Well, this one gives you flags and, well, um, nothing more. And this one gives you money and um, <laughs> logistics and stuff. Well, that's a big difference. So this is the best way I can explain it. And and now with the, 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 the announcement we had this year, we can have public funding as well. And that's a lot different. We can support our um, uh, teams, we can the junior have programs, and that's a, a whole new area, uh, area for us now. Look, I think that is, that is incred incredible. And I know you're being humble about it, that it's just started off, but it is a big achievement nonetheless. And albeit that it's the start of it, but... I recognize that sort of having at least that base and having all of that stuff that you've talked about in order will enable, you know, the sport to grow and move forward. So I think it's fantastic, Luis. And, you know, uh, that also brings me to another 
thing that I was thinking about, and you know, this I know is something that you're quite passionate about, talk about a lot, a fair bit on social media. Um, what are the actual number of players there? You know, this is a this is a debate that goes on in the squash world all the time. Uh, some organizations say it's 10 million. Some people say it's 1 million. Um, from what I can see personally here in Australia, the numbers are going down. Um, you know, I'm living in a country with the likes who had players with the likes of Jeff Hunt, Heather McKay, Chris Dittmar, our current head coach, uh, Stuart Boswell, you know, you name it. So legend after legend, Vicky Cardwell, you know, there's so many of these players, but today squash does not even make it in Australia in the top uh, five or six sports in terms of what choice should I take if I'm a student athlete. Um, I would rather go into tennis in the racket sport world, probably table tennis or badminton because in Asia, there's a lot of money for me to make um, or in team sports like cricket uh, AFL, rugby, and even soccer or football would come much before squash. So what, you know, tell me a little bit about why this is important to you and what it's like with the numbers from your understanding in Portugal, but also uh, on, on a global level, do you think that a lot of these numbers that are thrown out by random people, everyone's got a different number. So where do you think that sits? I'd love to hear your views on that. Yes. And um, it's actually one of the things that I'm, I'm standing on right now because, um, and I have to be honest, and when I talk about this, it's because I really um, feel that it's, it, it, it's a pain for us. And we, we cannot, every time I see someone uh, putting, promoting squash saying, listen, this is um, considered by Forbes uh, the best sport, in, uh, the most healthy sport in, in the world. And I, and I say, and I always ask them, listen, when was that written? And said, ah, oh, this is for like 2013, 2003. I said, wow, that's 18 years ago. Have you, what's the most recent um, story that you have about it? And they always go, go back to 2003 and 20 million. And, and, and I tell, well, we are not 20 million. I'm, I, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm sorry also because I don't know how many we are. So this is something that we, we, we have to chase. And as well, we, we finished a study here in Portugal. Uh, where um, before going outside, I said, well, I, I cannot talk about something that I, I don't, uh, don't know my, uh, my actual numbers in Portugal as well. So I, I knew that when we started the, well, uh, on, on board uh, in 2014, uh, we were like less than 200 people affiliated to the Federation. And yeah. we said that, well, we must be like 5,000 people playing um, sport in Portugal. But how did we get to that number? Well, people were talking, we, we figured out how many courses we have and this and that. And that we said, no, we have to do it by, by, as it, sh it should be. So we did the study where we, we went back and, and looked for how many courses we have, how many um, venues do we have. And that's actually good if I, we, we, we stop there uh, because we, you're going to have them uh, at Squash Summit, uh, Squash Players app. And yep. um, uh, we, we managed to put every venue from Portugal inside. So we, we managed to put there 60 venues and we found out that, okay, we, we have like almost 110 courts available. But what, what did that, those numbers or that study told us? From the last 10 years, we lost like 20% of the courts. And it, that's, that's a whole lot of courts. And how many do, do, do we have new? Well, less than, less than six, less than six venues. So we are losing so much in, in the past 10 years. And we, what, what do we have to do to go forward? What about players' numbers? Like I said, we were like a thousand, uh, uh, less than 200 playing uh, the sport. And uh, right now we are 500, which is not bad, which means that we, we grew from less than 200 to 500. But then again, 500 is, is so many, so it's not many people. We, we need to go to thousands of people. And how many plays? We, we, we asked all the cards, the, the attendants, how many people were there. So we have to say that we are about 2,500, like two, 3,000 people. So this has to be the basis. We, we, we have to, we, we are not, if we say we are 10,000, just promote it, we are, we are not helping the sport. 
we just putting dust in front of our faces. We have to go from, from the very beginning, from grassroots, and we have to go forward. And actually, that was something that um, I think the World Squash Federation is doing uh, right now because they, they are modernizing the sport. And with the, uh, I was speaking with w w William uh, Lewis, with the new CEO, and the Zina that you'll, you'll have as well. And what, before the election they had last year, I said, listen, uh, and that's why they asked me to write a, a piece for, for that, that to, because we, we wanted to do a squash map in Portugal. And from, because I have a consultant uh, background as well, I'm a financial guy, but uh, a consultant as well, I said, listen, we're doing this map with the quadrant. You need to know if you are growing in clubs and if you are growing in players. And if we are in the magic quadrant, that means that we are growing in clubs and we are growing in players. If we are in the top down, which I think we are in many countries, we need mm -hmm. to know where, and we as federation, we need to help. That's, that's why we federation exists, to help that, the, the, those countries. And my purpose is how me as a, an, an active person in a, a federation, if, I'm, if I want to do that job with my team, that's our purpose. We need to know our numbers and uh, where are, are we growing, where are we decreasing. So coming in with the, this recognition we have, Maybe this could be an inspiration for many other countries that they, what if Portugal did, and they are a small country over there in Europe, how, how did they do it? We are helped, very well pleased to, to help, but it's possible to get there. But you need to know your numbers. That's the, the most, uh, the, one of the grassroots things that you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you look at any other major sport. And that's sort of the very first basic level of things that they recognize and understand. And it's crucial because if you don't know the numbers, you don't know how many people are coming through the ranks, uh, where the sport is going. Are they then going to be able to teach the next set of people what happens? Uh, just coming back to the Forbes study that you talked about, you know, uh, 2003, the players coming nowadays are probably born around that time. You know, the, the, the young starters. So, uh, very outdated. I actually prefer a way of saying uh, how to best talk about squash to someone new. And I always say this, which is in a day and age where, you know, we don't have time for anything. Squash is a sport where you can go in socially, play a 30 minute game, get out and get on with your day and have a full workout, you know, and that's a much better sell in my opinion. And you can correct me if I'm wrong than saying, you know, this Forbes study almost 20 years ago said so and so. Um, we're in a day and age where things are so busy. Um, we don't have time to, you know, go out of our way and do things because everyone's always on the run. Yes, yeah, sure. Even during this pandemic, you know, it's it will pass. And we are obviously coming to a point where, you know, we will be passing through from this and things will perhaps get back to some sort of normal. Um, but the fact of the matter is people will get busy again. And when you get busy, uh, a game like squash, where you can go in 30 minutes, done, boom, you're out, next step, sorted. I think that's a great sell to young people. It's just about how you're selling it. Um, <laughs> and Exactly, exactly. Uh, sorry to, to interrupt. And, um, but uh, uh, a couple of things. Um, one is uh, if you want to address to, to, to the new ones, and it's like you said, they, they were born in 2003 they, or after the, that fourth study. You cannot relate to that because they, they were, oh, that's too old. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's a very busy place. And again, I was talking with a friend of mine who goes and plays Pavel, and he says, I was talking about our squash. In 30 minutes, you can do this, this, and that. And I said, well, in Pavel, um, I can play every day. If I go and play squash for one hour and a half, I cannot move for two days, you know? So I really thought, he's right. Because this is squash is really tough, and if you're not fit and you play for one hour and a half, you won't move for the next two days. And lots of people, well, yeah. uh, you 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 are working, you stay the whole day sitting down on your computer, and then if you go at the end of the day to play a sport that is really demanding, you have to know, and and you have to sell it. Or either you play for half an hour and you can play every day because you have half an hour, or the, if you go for uh, an hour and a half. You, you will have to know that you have to be fit and, and you will have these consequences. So it, it's the way you promote it. And one of the things that make, every time I go to this 
um, annual general meeting at uh, World Squash Federation or European Squash Federation, I always tell them, listen, how, how much did we, we invest as a whole uh, region in, in marketing? And I said, well, uh, nothing. And um, because, and uh, I've been looking in, into the accounts like for the, as an observer for the last five years, and I always put it out the finger, I said, how come we invest here, there in committees and uh, officials and championships? We, we are not, we are just thinking on the things we have, championships. What, what are we doing to get more people? How, how are our social media accounts? Well, we don't really have one. So how will we go, go and get new people, the youngsters, if we are not in Instagram, if we are not in TikTok, if we are, yeah. or, or we're using Twitter? Twitter? Who, who, who would use this Twitter? Even that, you know, okay, in, you, in the US, they are into Twitter. In, in, in Portugal, if they are in Instagram. So you have to promote an Instagram. And we, we need to know that. So it's the way you address, who do you want to speak to? Otherwise you're just putting news out and it goes against the wall and no one will hear it. So it's, we need to change a lot. And that's what, one of the things, uh, the couple of things I wanted to share. Yeah, look, absolutely. And, and I, I was waiting to talk to you about social media uh, because I know that you, you're really passionate about it and that's how we connected as well. Um, and, you know, this is this is a very major issue. Whoever I speak with in the squash world, um, you know, a lot of people who are uh, such as yourself, very interested in in growing the game, marketing it uh, with the use of digitization, essentially, uh, you know, criticize people across squash in uh, senior or leading positions that, you know, no one is involved in social media. Um if you want to, you know, if I want to, I, I always give this example. If I want to reach out to somebody in a in a in another sport that we cover at Sportageous, uh, which is sport climbing, uh, I shoot them a message and they'll get in touch with me. In squash, I often, uh, you know, the higher it gets, more often than not, it's uh, uh, going through a lot of people before you actually get to the person you want to speak to, and that's unfortunate. Uh, I would get it if, you know, I was trying to talk to somebody at FIFA uh, because, you know, they, they could probably, they would probably charge me money to speak to them and, and understandably, right? But you, on the other hand, are, you know, one of those few people who is very, very active in uh, on social media. And, you know, why, obviously you've touched on it a little bit, but why do you think, you know, that is important aside from the fact that it will help you per perhaps reach the people that you want to reach, but in your opinion, why, what makes you come back to it every time and continue talking about squash on social media? Yes, and uh, for me, that is crucial. Uh, if, if you're not there, you do not exist. And again, in squash, we have to combine a lot of things. We, uh, in, in what I feel is that we need to combine experience and yes, uh, we, we, there are people that uh, they, they went for the golden era, yes, golden era passed, we're not there anymore, and, but they, they have the experience, they have the knowledge, they have the passion. And if you don't have the passion, you could be 10 years old, you could be 17 years old. I've spoken with people with 80 years old, they have the passion of a, a youngster. So, you have to keep experience, but also you, you, you cannot sit down. You, you have to have a team um, with has experience uh, that uh, looks into marketing, who are active in social media and um, knows how to sell the sport. We, we cannot so that we cannot rely only to our script. We did this, we did that, and I, I'm a very positive guy, you know. But uh, I, I, I'm a very transparent as well. So uh, for me, coming out in the in the social media, it's not to point out the bad things, but it's to speak about, again, consulting background, um, SWOT analysis, or what, what's our strengths? We need to know that. How can we need to look at it? Um, threats, what, what threats us? Other sports, people not joining in, um, um, opportunities, um, well, the SWOT, the SWOT analysis. So yeah. we need to get all that and adapt. And in each region, we need to, how, how does this happen? And because if we are not there, as I said, we do not exist. And we have to help every organization to change. 
for instance, in Europe, how many do, do they have um, the, the social media coming up? I, I'm speaking with the new guys going in, in the as presidents, like my friend in Spain or uh, other, other uh, countries, and they are remodeling the website to have all connected to the social media. If you put a, uh, something in, it goes to LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, uh, wherever, and a video, because otherwise you will not keep it. And one of the good things that Squash has is that you can connect to all the players. So I go into LinkedIn, all of uh, your guests that I didn't know uh, right now, I'm, all, uh, I'm already connected by, uh, to them by LinkedIn. I, I spoke with them because we are Squash people. We, we are passionate about our game, and we uh, this one, this people, this one wants to speak with me. So let if I have a chance, I'll, I'll go into it. And so this is our strength. You could be a top player, and you can go and, and, and talk with them. So, for me, if um, and this is an appeal to every country, if we're not in the social media, we're not doing it right. So we have to stop and rethink the way we approach it. Look, I think I completely agree with you there, Luis, because you know us at Sportages, for example, uh, myself and uh, my business partner Furhan, we are complete outsiders to this world. We do not have it. We did not have any connections in squash. We did not, you know, we weren't coaches. We play socially. Uh, you know, our we have fathers who played the game. You know how how it goes, and hence we played the game. That sort of thing. And coming in using social media, using these digital tools. You know, here we are, uh, 16 months after launching, almost uh, hosting the squash summit. Uh, in such a short uh, in such a short period of time, so social media is so integral, exactly as you've um, sort of stated, and it's definitely you know the way of the future, more so the way of right now. It needs to happen this moment as we're speaking. Uh, so look, I think it's fantastic that you know you're you've made that appeal, and hopefully more and more people from across uh, squash federations globally do sort of come on board this. Uh, what I would like to call, you know, social media movement within the game. Uh, and just before we wrap things up, uh, I do want to say to everyone watching, listening, wherever you are watching or listening, um, be sure to follow, uh, you know, the, the Portugal Squash Federation social media. Since we are on that topic, <laughs> uh, you know, you'll find, you'll, find, <laughs> you'll find all the links below in the description caption, wherever you are. Um, lastly, Luis, what are we expecting in uh, with squash in the future? I know that you've touched on it. And more importantly, I know that you personally have something coming up as well um, in, in the squash world uh, with regards to the European Squash Federation. So I'd love to hear what's, what's going on there. Okay. Um, I, I would like to share um, also, um, well, two things. Um, and this is something that is working here in Portugal as well. You were talking about being new, and as well, uh, like since two years ago, we thought I'm always every, every time I, I, I meet someone, and I'll, that's why one of the reasons I, I like to go to tournaments as well to play and to meet all the people. Every bit of minute that I'm resting or trying to breathe or before between matches, I want to look into people and see. You can see. When they speak, when, if they're new to squash, uh, what, what they feel, what, how did they uh, arrive to squash, how did they, they get to know squash. And that was the reason, uh, and I always think, okay, do they have a profile to be in a federation? How can they help us? And it's, it's, um, it's really interesting because we did this remodeling and we have this, these committees inside. And it's, it's curious to know that two of the responsible for two committees, the, one is development, um, uh, coordination and women coordination. They both, they are in squash in less than two, three years. And so, and, they, and the first question they, they asked me was, why me? I, I'm, I barely know the rules. And I said, well, but you have new ideas. You made me think. Uh, you made me uh, think about, okay, we are doing this because that's the way we do it for 20 years. That's wrong. We need new people in. We need fresh ideas take off the bad habits and that's what I really think that we need new people, new blood, new thinking, young people or young minded people so that you yeah, have to be humble enough to say okay I'm here for some, some years but 
we we have to think on on the, these these ideas. We need to readapt. So that that's one of one of them crucial. The other thing that um, uh, I feel, and you were mentioning, um, European Sports Federation. Well, finally, and I was challenged before to, to run as a uh, to go to the board and be a vice president. And uh, twice I said no <laughs> for for some reason. First because uh, I have this challenge, and I still have. I'm not stepping up from Portugal Federation because I feel that we have a, a project here. We did many good things. I, I feel. But uh, I still have this project. So before things were well organized enough for me to to, to, to leave it um, and go. And the same thing, I, I still want to, to be married and <laughs> with with my yeah. my wife and have my family. And as well, I work in an organization that is really demanding at the southern Uh But now I feel that, and this pandemic made me feel uh, when they they came to me again and said, "Listen, we we need people." Uh, maybe like you, and what you want to rethink and going as uh, helping us at the European Sports Federation. And I said, well, I, I, I need to feel that I have the time to do it, and um, that what I, I want to do is this. And this was social media, marketing, promoting, and I, I, I had to have space to do it. So let's see, we're going to elections in May, and this is how I feel. I, I, I really think that, that I can help. If I have the, all the free time to do it, well, I don't. But uh, the other day, and I shared it in the social media, I said, well, if you want to get something done, ask a busy person. So, because they will find time to, to, to do their job. Yeah. So, help me God, help me, my friends, and squash the uh, world. Uh, but um, I, I really think that can help. Yeah, look, absolutely. Wish you, wish you all the best, Luis, on that front. Um, and you know we'll be we'll be happy to help you sort of uh, take on that challenge and promote you know what you're doing as well. Uh, you've always you've always got a, a spot here at Sportagius as well. And uh, you know uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And of course we'll be catching up very shortly at at the Squash Summit. And I wanted to thank you for all your support already. We've had a very very good response from Portugal. Uh, in in our uh, registrants, so we've had a lot of people register from Portugal, which has been awesome. And you know, we we don't have much of a presence there, so I think credit where it's due. That's definitely your doing. <laughs> um, but look, Luis, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate, chatting to you, learning from you, and I wish you all the best in the future. And obviously, looking forward to keeping in touch and keeping uh, working together in some capacity or the other. To make the sport grow. Well, thanks again for, for having me, for having Portugal in, uh, and I'm sure that we'll be chatting a lot uh, in, the, in the near future, and you can come to with us as well and, and the squash summit, which I have to say again, it's already a success, so congratulations to you and your team, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll see a lot of, of us there, so um, let's, let's look, go and move forward with it.